Hi, I'm Amelie. I'm the food and school blogger. Uh, today I'm here in Bangkok to interview Asia's best female chef, uh, Margarita Flores. Hi, nice I'm Amelie. It's nice to meet you too. Thank you for coming here and I'm very honored to have this interview with you today. I'm excited to chat with you as well. I would like to ask you first um, some questions about your career. Okay. So, um, how did it begin? Okay. Well, um, I started some 30 years ago. Um, it, it wasn't something planned at all. I was working in fashion at the uh, House of Valentino in New York City. Um, I actually started with the fur licensee, the person who was making the fur coats for Valentino at first. And then um, eventually, um, the lady who was handling all the licensees of Valentino kind of took a liking to me, so she actually pirated me from the from the fur maker and um, eventually I moved to the to the main office of Valentino in New York City and um, you know uh, working in fashion at that time in the APs in New York was like one of the best things to do um, it was the, the era of Studio 54 and you know New York was at its like golden age um, and uh, the fashion part was very exciting for me but I think what happened was that I fell more in love with the Italian people, the culture, the way they did things. Um, I appreciated like the strength of the Valentino brand. So that was like something really nice to learn. Um, but in the evenings, like I would find myself like making excuses, inviting friends over and having, you know, making pasta for them and like setting the table and, and you know, creating an ambiance. And maybe that whole sort of feeding and nurturing experience became sort of more interesting for me it kind of like got me in the gut and it, it really felt um, something like what I wanted to do more than just fashion oh, yeah okay okay um, so we were into New York and I didn't yeah. know that was, and that's how yeah. I started that's right? how you started yeah. and then after that so it was like about Italian cooking, right. sharing it with all the all the team and everything. And then after, how did you manage okay. to get into? Yeah. Well, food? actually, um, after that stint with Valentino and and uh, and sort of enjoying New York at that time, where there were a lot of Italian um, people moving to New York City, opening not only restaurants but um, retail stores, etc. So it was kind of like the Italianization of New York. And um, it really got me interested uh, with more sort of modern Italian cooking rather than the traditional Italian restaurants with a red and white plaid tablecloths and the garlic hanging okay. on the ceiling. Yeah. And you know, at that time, my family was there in self-exile because we left the Philippines because of um, a um, not getting along with the Marcos administration. So that's why we were in New York. Okay. And my grandfather. Um, kind of like to keep the family together and that's why we moved our whole sort of um, living environment to New York City and suddenly he passed away in 1985 so we all went back to Manila okay. and at that time I mean I was already getting into this thing of do I really want to learn about Italian cooking and all that so after a few months in Manila um, I asked my mom if you know I could kind of like take a trip to Italy and see if this interest that I was developing was something that I really wanted to do. So um, I had a friend who was in fashion school, design school in Florence, and I asked her to find me a, a teacher for Italian cooking. And I always say I'm, I'm not really a planner, so I never really sort of like envision or have a path for myself. I just kind of like go along the way. So um, I didn't even tell her what kind of teacher to find for me. but. The teacher that she found was just an Italian signora who was teaching out of her house. Wow. So um, I'm thinking maybe that that was providential. So I, I flew to Florence in um, late August of 1986 and I met my teacher. Her name, her name was Masha Innocenti and she was teaching out of, a, of a, an apartment, a house in Florence. And I would take cooking classes with her in the morning and take language courses in the afternoon. And um, eventually, since I knew I was going to be in Italy for four months, after the course with her, 
I found two other Italian signoras, one in Milano, north, yeah. and one in Rome, just so I could learn a little bit more about regional Italian oh, yeah, cooking. Okay. So you did whole, whole country. Yeah, but, yeah, but all from Italian signoras, which yes. I think um, made a difference with the kind of background that I have, you know, with the way that I learned. Oh, okay, that's very interesting. In which culinary trend would you place your cuisine? What are your biggest influences? Well, I think that um, maybe because um, I started out doing Italian food, um, the the essence of Italian food has always been home cooking. And um, eventually, you know, when I started to do my work more and I started to do even my own Filipino cooking, what I tried to do initially was to kind of pair the best ingredients from my country and kind of use them side by side with the best of what the world has to offer. And um, so it, it's always been like a play of ingredients, but at the same time, um, I think the exposure of having traveled and, and visited many of the more sort of um, famous, um, uh, you know, um, sort of um, celebrated restaurants, yeah. uh, the influence and, and kind of the exposure also allowed me to interpret my, my dishes in a more modern way. Um, because I do a lot of private catering as well, um, that's a good venue to be able to to um, continue to develop dishes that become um, newer and newer, but yes. still using the base of like mother combinations, like let's say eggs and truffle or um, parmigiano and and um, honey, something like that. I mean the traditional combinations that I learned through my work with Italian cuisine, I interpret those and then also use them like in the Philippines. For example, one of our classic dishes is an adobo and you always eat an adobo with a pickle that we call an achan. So it's like, a, you know, a vegetables that are in, in sweet and sour vinegar. So lately what I've done with the adobo is I've made like a gelatina, like a, a gelatin out of that pickle just to modernize the dishes a bit. So it's always still, um, classic at the heart, but with a lot of modern touches to bring it up to date. And so, um, can you tell us a bit more about Philippine food? Because it's still very unknown from the foodie world. Right. So it's kind of been on the rise. Yeah, I think, I think that it's um, taken a little bit longer than other Asian cuisines to yes. kind of come into the fore. But I think that there's a reason for that. Um, we Filipinos have always felt that our culture is a combination of many influences. No? There was Malay, Malay culture already mm -hmm. there before the Spaniards came. Then we were trading with the Chinese even before the Spaniards came. And then we had 333 years of Spanish rule. So you can imagine how the cuisine was affected by that as well. And then another 45 years of American burgers and spaghetti. Yes. So I think that um, rather than try to box um, Filipino cuisine in, in sort of just one sort of concept, I think what's great about it is to be able to celebrate it and say that it is a mixture of many influences. Um, we have a, a dessert that we call Halo Halo. It's like one of our most iconic desserts and it translates to mix mix. So I always say that our cuisine is actually a halo halo. It is a mixture of many influences, and so is it more like, um, is it what kind of resemblances are there between like Filipino food and Southeast Asian? Food? Well, I think that there's a lot of Southeast Asian influence, but there's also a lot of, of Chinese in it, and then there's a little bit of Spanish that's also okay. in there. So, um, although the the um, maybe the most um, prominent flavor profile would be the sourness okay. and mixing the sour with the sweet. We have a lot of souring ingredients that we use all over the country, different ones in different parts, and maybe that's the flavor profile that's most um, prominent. And then we also work in a lot of salty from the fish sauce, a little bit like Thai fish sauce or Vietnamese fish sauce. So there's a lot of, of those combinations, but then again, we also have, let's say, kare kare, which is a peanut soup that's very, very like ma Malay Indonesian. And then we also have paella in our in, Ay, in our yeah. scheme of things. So there's a lot of that, and I think maybe the uniqueness is that it is maybe the only sort of Latin Asian culture and Latin Asian cuisine 
and and maybe that's what adds the uniqueness. Yeah, to the it. uniqueness. And then, um, how how is the culinary scene right now in, in the Philippines? Oh, I think that you know it's very vibrant. We're yes. all That's kind of like really excited that not only in our country but all the other Filipinos were, you know, cooking in kitchens all over the world. Everybody's kind of gotten on the same sort of on the same train. Everybody yeah. everybody um, has decided to be united. We always had a a bit of a of a an issue with our national identity and there are many things that have happened I think in the last maybe five years six years you know with Manny Pacquiao mm -hmm. winning or even yes. Yolanda the storm that hit us in such a big way yes. it caused so much havoc but I think it also made people discover how beautiful our country is and how resilient we are as a people yes. so that all these things kind of made us get united and say okay we're all gonna work together and bring our cuisine forward so fast forward to 2016 I think that it's it's the time for our, our cuisine to to be noticed yeah that, that's amazing and what what culinary you know what what are you expecting as in the gastronomy to emerge in Philippines and in Asia in 2016 well I think what's great is that there's a real wave of um, more uh, Filipino restaurants even in the Philippines oh, yeah. coming and they're you know um, interpreting Filipino cuisine in a modern way. There are some that are also doing the classic style. And um, in the past, we didn't have so many local restaurants because we ate Filipino food at home. But now there's this wonderful sense of pride to interpret our cuisine in, in a variety of ways. And that's, that's I think, um, a very prominent trend for us mm. in the Philippines. And I think globally as well, in cities like New York, yes. in Los Angeles, even in London, for example, there's a, a restaurant that's going to be opening soon, and a mainstream one, not just mm -hmm. restaurants for the Filipino communities abroad, yeah, yeah. but more for foreign palates that are now wanting to discover Filipino food. So we're very happy about that. Ah, that's very that's very interesting. I didn't know that. And um, what has the title of Asia Best Female Chef meant to you? Well, you know, it's it's actually been a real life changer. Oh, yeah? um, it really came as a shock to me because um, I didn't really realize that our peers in the industry all over Asia were actually watching what we were doing in yeah. the Philippines and I guess being chosen is a real validation and I'm just really humbled but it's also um, kind of convinced me that there's a huge responsibility that comes with being given the title and um, there are still a lot of things I think that um, that I can bring to the fore. You know, a lot of things that people still need to discover about Filipino cuisine. And I think being given this title allows yes. me the platform to be able to speak about that in a bigger way. And um, maybe it also um, blesses me with the opportunity to be a little bit of a spokesperson for my country and um, allow people to discover more about the things that they can still discover in the Philippines and at the same time also maybe take away some of the preconceived notions yes. that haven't been so positive about our cuisine. So it's a, it's something great to look forward to. So I'm, I'm really so thankful that you know um, being given uh, the title of Asia's Best Female Chef, I mean, comes with a lot of promise for a lot more things to do. So, you know, being a woman, that maternal maternal side is always there, and the the desire to nurture and to feed is something I guess that maybe a man will never feel because they will never be able to have children. But I think that it does spell the difference maybe in the way um, women work in the kitchen and create dishes and I think that it's a it's it's also a good way to add variety in the industry a difference the difference with the way um, uh, a, a male chef it will interpret something um, different from the way a woman would. Um, about the ingredients Margarita, yes. chefs often speak about um, the, the quality of the ingredients yes. and the fact that they are locally produced. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion about that? And well you know I, I I think that um, it was part of the gift to have been able to, 
to start my my career in Italy because that's something that the Italians have always felt strongly about the respect for ingredients, the the importance of using the best produce all the time, and you know fast forward 25 years after when I started to work um, in my own country. Um, it really kind of encouraged me to work closely with the farmers, encourage them to plant new things. When I started working in, in Manila, coming from Italy, we didn't have good tomatoes. Okay. We only had our local tomatoes from very acidic soil. But today, it's really great that there are so many farmers doing many different things. They've been creative and brought seeds in from Italy. So we have now a huge number of tomato varieties and it's made our industry as well and, and the whole sort of food scene become more vibrant. Um, cheeses we never used to make in the Philippines. We only had one white cheese. But nowadays we have women making burrata, huh? making, making mozzarella and doing a variety of other things with local milk. So I think that the world has gotten so much smaller and this whole desire to be able to create ingredients um, and and plant ingredients and and bring make the world a little smaller yes. so you have everything kind of available wherever you are. That's become um, a real sort of thing to look forward to. Um, even with seasonality, for example, I mean, in in Europe you have four seasons as well as in America, and that's what makes the the, the food scene interesting. In in the Philippines, we only have wet and dry, sometimes yes. not even, it's just mm -hmm. hot. And um, I think what's good also though, is lately people have been more sort of conscious of seasonality. Yes. Because we do have, you know, um, yes. seasonality with our fruits and our vegetables. And people are starting to cook that way a okay. little bit more, also so in, in the Philippines now. And then a lot of chefs are doing things from scratch. Yes. Um, are you doing things yourself from, you know? Well, yes, process? lately in our kitchens, we've been starting to like make our own yogurts. Um, there, there are farmers that are now bringing us better quality milk that have a little bit higher fat content um, in spite of the, the weather in the Philippines. So yes, we are doing things from scratch. Um, there are also grains that uh, people never really used to enjoy in the Philippines. Something that, like for example, we call this grain adlai, which is Chinese barley. It was always just grown in the provinces very quietly. And um, there's been some government initiative from the Department of Agriculture to introduce this ingredient to the chefs. Oh, so it's so kind cool. of like our version of quinoa. Uh, it's an old grain. And um, we're very happy that maybe in the last two years, so many more of us chefs are starting to use it. And we've actually shared it with other, other chefs from abroad. So now um, there's a new interest in you know, all these kind of like ingredients that we were just taking for granted in the Philippines. So we're happy that people are taking notice. And are you cultivating things yourself? Well, yes, my, my family started a little farm. I mean, even in my own backyard at home, I have, you know, these, um, these wild sort of weeds that, that grow very, very um, easily in, in, uh, in the Philippines. And we didn't know that they could be used for food. And, and all of that is, is, there's a real sort of wave uh, to do all that in the Philippines now. So I do it myself, and I'm looking forward to planting even more um, not only in my own hometown, because in I come from Negros um, Occidental, and that province is kind of like a, a real trailblazer and a pioneer in growing things organically. So um, being proudly from, from that area, um, I'm also uh, doing a lot of work with the farmers there to be able to advocate you know, cleaner ingredients, grow more sustainably. So it's a, a real advocacy for me. I'm a, I'm a double cancer survivor, so that's really forced me to, yeah, to, oh, to really be more conscious of not only um, enjoying cleaner ingredients for myself, yes. but really espousing it um, for use, you know, with the work that I do and sharing those ingredients with, with other chefs in the industry. Okay. And for the last question, Margarita, what is the key to your success in three words? Oh, gosh. Um, I think the first one would be persistence. Yes. You know, there have been a lot of challenges in the 30 years that I've been working, and I, I, I never um, gave yeah. up. 
in mm -hmm. spite of the trials and maybe the second would be like intense passion with the work that I do. Um, I think that everything comes from the heart and if, 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 it, if it comes from the heart then it doesn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. And I think the third thing would be um, I guess using my maternal side always. Yeah, I think oh, yeah. that you know that whole sense of of nurturing and being nurtured, I apply it um, in all aspects of my work, and I, I, it's always a work in progress. I don't think I'm a natural as a mother, so I'm still learning along the way. Um, but I think being conscious of that always, whether it's your work with your with your team or you know with with the guests that you feed, yes. and even just my own relationship with my son, I think that you know that. Um, remembering that whole maternal side is a real must to be oh, successful. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you so much, too. It was a pleasure.